My biggest concern today when I think about threat is the possibility that there'll be another another major attack, but next time they'll have deadlier weapons, not just airline tickets and box cutters. I worry very much about the possibility of a group of terrorists getting their hands on a biological agent of some kind or a nuclear device and uh, setting one of those off in the middle of one of our cities. Well, it's not Dick Cheney's nightmare, but a bizarre plot uncovered and revealed by the U.S. government. Iranians working with the Mexican drug cartel to take out a Saudi Arabian, Saudi Arabian ambassador on U.S. soil. Sound too far-fetched? Some are calling it a conspiracy theory, an attempt by the Obama administration to change the channel, get them off Fast and Furious, Solyndra, and other problems that they're dealing with down there. John Robson joins us now to help set us straight. John, you've heard, have you heard of the conspiracy theory coming out already? Every time there's a terror plot, it's claimed it's a conspiracy theory. But your thoughts on this? Well, every time there's a terrorist plot, they claim it's a conspiracy theory. I mean, my favorite one is, is the people in the Middle East who said, first of all, hooray, 911, we struck back against the Zionists and imperialists, and B, Muslims didn't do it. Well, it's not much of a great victory if you didn't do it. You know, all the thousands of Jews stayed home, blah, 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 blah. So people talk like that. But of course, this is a plot by the Iranians, who are Shiites, to strike at their hated Sunni rival in the heart of the great Satan. Let me pause you there, because a lot of people would be saying, well, you know, why would Iran strike out at Saudi Arabia? They're all on the same side here. Well... No, they're not. This is a critical point. People take their ideas seriously. People take their religion seriously. And yes, Shiites and Sunni are both Muslims. At least that's sort of, you know, how the world sees it. In fact, the uh, Sunnis and the Saudis in particular deny that the Shia are Muslim. They say it's a Jewish conspiracy. They say everything's a Jewish conspiracy. They think Barbie's a Jewish conspiracy. But, th but there is this absolutely bitter to the death hostility between these two branches of the religion. And they're happy to kill one another when they're not killing infidels of some stripe or another. And so the prospect of getting the Saudi ambassador and killing a bunch of Christians and Jews at the same time... In a Washington restaurant. In Washington, D.C., of course this appeals to the Iranians. Uh, it's the sort of thing that the, uh, was it the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps... Uh, Quds Force, which is Jerusalem Force, like not that they're obsessed with Jews or anything. Um, yeah, this is so the sort of thing they dream about. The Revolutionary Guard in Iran is called the Quds That's, Force. It's a branch of them that d attempts to do really awful things abroad. And, and this is the one that is uh, implicated by Eric Holder, the Attorney General of the U.S., as being behind this plot. And Quds means. Yeah, it means Jerusalem. And, and, of course, the fact that they, they sort of comic opera bungled by going to a Mexican drug cartel and picking an American undercover agent, uh, it doesn't make it any less sinister that it fortunately was inept. And, and it wasn't Dick Cheney's nightmare scenario. This would have been, as terrorist attacks go, reasonably low-key. This nightmare of a dirty bomb or some other weapon of mass destruction was not part of this. But striking at Washington, D.C. is getting pretty brazen. Now, do you think this will, because I, I'm, I'm not alone in thinking that the Obama administration has not taken the Iranian threat seriously, specifically Iran trying to get a nuclear weapon, which could eventually play into Dick Cheney's greatest fear. Will this make the Obama administration and the Washington establishment, which, let's face it, for the Western world does influence a large degree of worldwide foreign policy, will this make them wake up? I'm sure it will get their attention. I just noticed parenthetically, an Iranian bomb scares the Saudis more than anybody else. But it certainly ought to worry the rest of the world, too. And, you know, the, I've always said Barack Obama's a silly man. It, to some extent, he doesn't take anything seriously, including his own fairly radical beliefs. But there are a lot of people in the United States, in the military, in the intelligence establishment and in American politics who are serious people, who've thought about this, who understand the kind of options that exist and the need to exercise them. If Barack Obama gets blown in that direction by the wind then they can do things. And, you know, don't forget, he did authorize the killing of Osama bin Laden. He did and, authorize and, the and killing of Al uh, uh, Wallachi. So sometimes he does do the right thing. And even though I don't like Barack Obama and I think he's a lightweight, when he does the right thing, I'll give him credit. Maybe it's time to get it together with the Israelis and go after the Iranian nuclear program, but there are other options. Well, one of the problems with the Israelis taking it out, and everyone would expect that um, Israel would just fly some jets over there and, uh, and launch some bombs and take it out that way before they have a fully functioning atomic weapon, is that that's out of range for the Israeli Air Force. They don't have the ability to fly over without refueling at some point, without flying over 
hostile territory or flying over Iraq and having the Americans look the other way. So they haven't been given the green light by anybody, either the Saudis to say, oh, well, we'll look away while you fly over or the Americans saying, oh, yeah, you can fly over Iraq. So they just they're not able to make it one way or the other. This perhaps will make the Americans say, you know what, we should let the Israelis go in and do this. Yeah, or go with them. I mean, you're going to get blamed anyway. If you're going to be hated, you might as well be feared. The problem is that the Iranian program seems to have been constructed in very hardened facilities. It's not by any means obvious that there's an airstrike plan that does get to the critical production facilities. But I mentioned this uh, on another program on this network yesterday. John Thompson of the McKenzie Institute pointed out some time ago that if you really need to do something to Iran, you can target their water infrastructure. There are ways of hitting at Iran and showing the Iranian people, as long as they have the government they have, there are going to be consequences that will be felt throughout the country. Now, that's a kind of hard thing to do, because what you really want to do is get the government, not the people. After all, the people didn't elect the government. But if you need to do something that will strike at that regime, one of the ways you can do it is to target sewage and water production facilities. The Iranians are quite vulnerable. You can hit their oil exports. There are things you can do short of a successful regime on uh, uranium enrichment and other nuclear bomb-making facilities deep inside uh, mountain complexes, which are quite hard to get at. Uh, uh, Canada has imposed some tough sanctions, but a few years ago we were still selling a lot of wheat. The Europeans do an awful lot of business with Iran still. The Russians, the Chinese, huge fans. They support them. Uh, is it time to lean on those two and say, look, these are dangerous people that need to be dealt with? Well, the Russians and Chinese would say, we know that. That's why we're propping them up against you. I mean, they just vetoed a resolution against Syria that didn't even include sanctions. They're not on our side in this struggle. I mean, again, it's kind of my enemy's enemy. Obviously, militant Islam doesn't like communism um, any more than certain branches of militant Islam like other branches of militant Islam sort of kill each other, then kill us, kill us, then kill each other, go after the communists, then the infidels. I mean, it doesn't matter to them as long as everybody winds up dead except them in the end. Uh, but you, you don't wait for the Russians and the Chinese to get on board. This is not how you make the world a safer place. When you need to, you go after the bad guys. But I always say, don't forget that our Saudi allies are pumping out poison. You know, these textbooks they distribute where Jews are monkeys and Christians are pigs and that kind of stuff. A tidal wave of hatred of the West and of infidels comes out of Saudi Arabia. You can't build a church in that country. I mean, they, they're absolutely intolerant of us and they, they want us dead too. They're just afraid of the Iranians. So they're willing to use us against the Iranians and then come after us. Uh, so don't be fooled about what they're like either. They are not our friends. They are allies of convenience, and only to a limited extent are they even that. All right. You don't paint a, um, a hopeful picture. It's the Middle East. John Robson, thanks for coming in.